Hey everyone, uh, sorry I missed Monday night. Um, my schedule doesn't always allow for these things and I know that when I sign up, but I do it anyway. So um, I know also that this is interactive and that it's helpful to, um, it's the purpose of all of this, right? Is the, the conversation. So I just wanted to share my part. Um, uh, I, I am struggling with this, to be honest. Um, I'm not a good studier, which is what this is to me. So um, it's uh, it's a struggle, but but I made myself do this, and I want to keep doing this because I want to, you know, learn from it and grow. So I'm gonna try and do this pretty quickly because <laughs> I've got too much on my plate, as always. Um, so first, I'm gonna talk about my <clears throat> favorite images, my three favorite images, and I should have bookmarked these. I'm sorry. Um, here it is. Uh, the first one is the frozen frozen lake and cliffs on page 11. Um, this one spoke to me because it's 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 an image that can be looked at in several ways. If you look at it, it can look like um, a very huge landscape. But if you look at it again, it can also look like a small, intimate landscape. Unless you know what it is, you really aren't sure. Um, and I am drawn to that sort of thing in my own work. So um, I also loved for the story that he really worked for this, um, as he did for a lot of his work. Um, I think we all have it quite easy these days compared to what um, people like Ansel Adams had. Um, you know, it's you don't always know if you're looking at this again, it's kind of a perspective thing with that image. It, are you looking straight down? It could be from a cliff. It's it's just a really kind of a interesting abstract piece. Um, and that you, he, you know, he had to work for the final print. He didn't touch this for a month. It sat on the film. So you don't even know, you know, what you're getting when you're doing that. And that I think still to this day, I think that it's important to learn on film if you can um, for that reason, because you, you have to, you get to anticipate what actually happened instead of that instant gratification. Um, so that was, that was that one. Um, my second one is on page 163, 163, sorry, I, I bookmarked the other stuff and not this, wasn't thinking this morning, uh, is Winter Sunrise on page 163, the Sierra Nevada from Lone Pine. Uh, this is on my bucket list. It was a trip I was supposed to take in 2018, um, 2000. 17 I think I was supposed to go and I ended up having to go take care of my mom so it's still on my list so it draws me for that reason because it's it's a location that I've been wanting to photograph for a long time um but also it's a moment that he captured that is never going to be the same again you know you you know you know you don't always get the same light weather and and that kind of thing but um I love the levels of it and the layers and the different shades of each each section each layer um and i and i love the contrast of it uh, with the shadows and the dark mountain and the shadows in the light mountains um the gradient of light is what i wrote down and then that tiny little horse down here er, <laughs> you know it's like i was taught in a course one time about including an element of surprise in your image and that's kind of what i would consider that because you're not really looking for that because this is what you're seeing and looking at and then all of a sudden you're like what what is that and at first i wasn't really sure what it was because it's so tiny um but it's it's also you know what his persistence in getting the image that he had in his head and continuing to do that and continuing to research what he needed to know to, find, to get those images again i i know a few people do that and it's so contrasting to my way of shooting um so it's it's something that is really incredible to learn about um and i've learned about ansel adams my whole life he's probably one of my favorites um, um and also you know like i said it's a moment it's gone in a um in a moment and i wrote i wrote removed lp on here and i can't i don't know what that meant so all right uh the next third favorite is page 61 which is, um, I've actually seen this one in person, um, is the Aspens in Northern Mexico. Again, it, it's, it's his use of light, it's his way of seeing and his way of being able to, to, to make 
that one aspen stand out from all the others. Um, this is the type of image that I struggle with. I walk in forests in woods quite often and I'm constantly trying to create photographs of the forest of all that. And I can never get it to not look chaotic. Um, you know, he's, he's a master of it. Um, so that's, that's why I was drawn to this because it, it's just, it's just, a, you know, it's just, here's the subject, here's the light, here's um, what I want to show you. Um, and how he singles out the tree and, and, and not that he singled it out. I'm sure it was lit up in some way, obviously by the sun, but he isolates his subject really well. Um, and his memory of the moment, um, you know, and he took two different compositions from the same location, which is, um, you know, a good reminder, look, always look around and don't get so zoned in on one thing that, that that's all there is, you know? Um, so those were my three favorites. Uh, my, my, probably my biggest main aha moment, and it probably isn't actually an aha moment. It's something I've known all along, but he pre-planned so much. And again, I think I said this already. I know a lot of people who do that. I know a lot of people who follow the sunlight and follow the Milky Way, follow what time sunrise and sunset is, what time is the moon rising? I, I just never, I'm a shoot from the hip person in general, like just my personality and how I operate, I wing everything, almost everything. Um, and, you know, to have to plan a shot, I just, I don't, it's not how I feel creative, right? To me, that's pushing it. That's like uh, trying to do something that may not be there, I think. Um, you know, I, I'm going to try to do this. Um, it's something that I haven't had time. I've hardly had my camera out this year, to be honest. So, um, but, you know, the amount of planning that went into this and, and what he did is, is kind of mind blowing. I, I, I mean, to me, I don't know. Some people are planners. I'm not a planner um, for the most part. But, um, and that's, that's, uh, I don't know. I just struggle with that. Um, but I never, ever do this. I never go, okay, so there's this pond and there's a specific tree, but I want to get it at this, this time of day when the light is like that. I just don't think that way. Um, because I, I am going to go and get what I find and what I know I can get. Like, I always know I can find something. There's always, always going to be something that I'm going to find that I can create. You know, so I don't feel the need to plan like that, I guess. Um, I don't have those bucket list photos on, on a list that I that I want to take. I'd rather be going somewhere and being in the moment and, and capturing what I find at that particular time, I guess, is a good way of putting it. So that was my biggest takeaway from this, um, the amount of planning. And, and I'll go through real quick my notes um, after I do little quote things. Um, I have three really quick quotes. I know we only picked one, but how can you not pick? Like there's like a hundreds of them in here. Um, so many. Um, but one of them is on page 55. I'm always visualizing image possibilities in the world around me, trying to relate shapes and values in whatever I see before me in terms of format and image qualities, the way the camera sees, not just the eye sees. The shape of the external world shapes of the external world are resolved into the frame of an image um this totally resonated with me because i'm constantly it never shuts off it basically is what i feel like he's saying you're constantly framing images constantly um looking at a composition or constantly looking where the light's coming from it just it's it's always there um and that's you know what what struck me because he's this he was the same he was the same you kind of get the feeling that he never shut off. <laughs> um, here's another quick one. I saw many beautiful things. This is on page 71. I saw many beautiful things, but few exciting picture possibilities. The photographer should not allow himself to be trapped by something that excites him only as subject. If he does not see the image decisively in his mind's eye, the result will likely disappoint. Um, and that, that struck me too, because again we see great things we see tons of stuff there's a lot of beautiful things like he said 
that doesn't mean they're all going to be good images. It doesn't mean we need to create that image just because it's pretty or it's a, an amazing landscape or a beautiful flower. Um, and, and for me, that's a reminder to be in the moment and take in that without the camera in front of your face. Um, so that was an, another one. And I have, I think, one more quick one, 93. Um, we should, this is kind of a two part, like just two little sections. We should never deny the power of intuition or hesitate to follow its revelations. Um, he relied on his own confidence and his own intuition. You can, it's obvious to me throughout his book and reading this, that that's how he operated. Um, and the other part of that is it's, it's essential that the artist trust the mechanisms of both intellect and creative vision. So you have to trust yourself. Obviously, we all have to learn to trust ourselves. We all have to believe that we can create, believe that we're artists. Um, but this is, this is a really good reminder of that from him. Um, and uh, I'm just going to go through some of the notes I made. I think some of you mentioned some of this. I haven't watched the complete all of it yet. Um, I have to do it in pieces because two hours is a lot for me to sit down at one time and do that. Um, but he here's what I can hear my notes. OK, he always was thinking ideas were constantly happening and evolving. Like I said, he never stopped. And um, I feel that's totally relatable. Um, he, his way of doing things and just using the film and the gear that they had is a reminder of how much slower and more deliberate they had to be. They had no choice, um, you know, film versus digital. I know he would have embraced all this, but I believe he still would have been very deliberate in how he approached it. Just because you can click a hundred shots doesn't mean you should, um, you know, the amount of equipment like that they carried and hiked up mountains is, is kind of insane. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't imagine doing that um, with those big, huge format cameras and stuff. Um, they worked, like I said, they really worked to get the image. Um, and maybe that's why they're more, more precious or special, those images, because they really worked for them. Um, you know, the whole zone system, I realized I never, ever really learned that. I never looked into it much. I have a very vague knowledge of it. Is it something that I will? I don't know. Probably not. Um, maybe someday. I don't know. Um, the things like he, his knowledge, he knew the luminance of the moon. Who knows that? <laughs> I guess if you're a photographer who's, a, who's good and obsessed with that sort of thing, you need to know that. Um, Again, I get, you know, it depends on what you do, too. Um, and how he remembers the scenes of all these images is beyond me. Um, you know, I that his memory of those moments is incredible. And I, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if that's a personal way of being. Um, you know, we joke about not remembering what we had for breakfast today, you know, uh, but for him to describe Almost every one of these pictures, almost every one of these images, the situation, the light, the day, what was going on, it blew my mind, the detail that he remembers about all of that, each one. And I don't, I don't, did he take notes? I thought there was something I read where he said he did and lost them or did and didn't and didn't always or something. I, I don't remember. Again, my reading comprehension is like, anyway, um, what else? Um, the working for every image, exposure of complicated scenes, light to dark. He just really, again, worked, 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 worked. Um, and he spoke often of seeing the image in his mind first. Um, and I, I also think that's something that digital has sort of taken away from some of us, not everybody. Some of us operate that way, I think. Um, but it's again, it's just more reminders to slow down and be deliberate about what you're doing when you're when you're taking photos and creating. And he was very, very good at adding mood and feeling into his images. Um, so with that, I'm going to share the three images I have that I chose. Um, oh, give me one second. Uh, I'm going to probably mess this up when I when I talk about these because I don't have the questions in front of me. Sorry, sorry. Bear with me one second. My laptop's being a little slow today. 
Uh, let me see here real quick. I have them on a screen and um, okay, good. All right. I just wanted to re get that in my head why I was sharing these images. Um, so here are my images. Sorry, my screen is, I mean, my computer, I'm having issues <laughs> trying to edit images this past week are not fun. Okay. I'm trying to share my screen and it's like three steps behind on what I'm clicking on. So, <laughs> all right, now, there we go. Now I'm sharing the screen and I, hopefully that's given you time to catch up, given it time to catch up. So this first image, um, I took at a car show and as I was looking through the viewfinder, I saw this one little spot of Boca, um, just you know in the area so i was i was totally deliberate about where i wanted to place that little spot um because i knew if i put it in the right place i could make it look like a halo around the the hood ornament's head um so it it made me be more intentional deliberate about what i was doing it made me pay attention to what was in my frame um you know, those are all things that he was an expert at. Um, and that's one of the things that I got out of this too. And, and it's something that I teach too, is being slow and deliberate, but I don't often do it myself as much as I should. So this, this situation with this car hood ornament was perfect for that. And if I hadn't been paying attention, I would have just taken the photo. Um, there's a lot going on at car shows, people all over. Um, I wouldn't have stopped, you know, I would have taken the photo because it's an interesting hood ornament, but I might not have stood there and paid attention uh, to that, that spot in it so that I could frame it correctly or frame it in a way that, that, that pops the image up a level from what it could have been. Um, the other two images I have are, are um, the images I was talking about before, the trees, the forest, the light, and stuff that I really struggle with, but I really wanted to try to channel my inner Ansel <laughs> and, and do that with these. Um, this is a place that I go quite often. Uh, there's bikes, it's a bike trails, uh, mountain bikes, cyclocross racers, and stuff like that. I photograph them for fun. Um, but I also go here and walk because it's quiet mostly. Uh, I usually know people there, so I feel safe um, if I'm on my own. Um, but depending on the time of day, the light here through the, through the trees is, is always mesmerizing to me. It's a, it's a very, um, meditative place. Um, and you know, his images give that quality to you, uh, the meditative and the light and the quality of the light. So I chose this and I chose to work on the editing. Um, I don't spend a lot of time editing my images. But this, I wanted to make sure that I had that kind of, you know, here's where the focus is, here's where the light is, this is what I want you to see. Um, and I think that I did, you know, I did okay with this one. Um, it, it, I struggle, I said, I struggle with these kind of images a lot. Um, this image is all about the light though. It isn't about a specific tree necessarily. Although I love, I love the light on this small tree right here. Um, that gives it its shape. Um, but that is what I pushed to do with this. And that was more of an editing choice. Obviously, I took the photo in the first place because of the light. Um, or hopefully that's obvious anyway. And the last one, this is something I actually took before. I had this in my archives uh, from the, within the last year, maybe, I think. Um, again, this is another forest reserve that I go to quite often. Um, but my editing skills with this kind of stuff are horrible. Um, so I wanted to, and knowing that he did what he did in the dark room with dodging and burning and um, all that, um, I have to admit, years ago I was in London and there was an exhibit of his, what would have been his 100th birthday. And they had all these images and a book and stuff about how he, he did his processing and all that. And up until that point, Call me naive. <laughs> I'm a realist. I'm like a, I'm a like. Here's the photo I took. This is it. That's how I learned. I never. I mean, I worked in the dark room a teeny bit here and there over the years, but 
um, I don't remember spending time dodging and burning and, and being really specific about certain areas of an image. Um, so I, I'm very much, it took, it's taken me years, years with digital too, um, to learn what I can do with post-processing and to get creative with it sometimes. I, I'm still a, a recorder of this moment and this is what it looked like, a realist, if you will. Um, <clears throat> I, I play sometimes and start getting creative and I've done that as well and I've done it more and more over the years, but I still go back to these images where I think, oh, this is really cool. This tree is going to stand out. But when you get it uploaded, it doesn't stand out really as much as you thought it might. Um, so again, this was more of a, a lesson and exercise in post-processing for me um, in making that center tree pop out more. Um, the light was on it. The color was a much lighter green than the background trees. But I spent time on this in individual sections, you know, here and here and here, um, individual pieces that I chose to highlight up the highlights or, um, you know, decrease shadows all around, that kind of thing. I just spent time playing with it until I got to where I felt like it was more like, you know, an Ansel Adams shot. <laughs> so um, anyway, I know this was really short and quick, and uh, there's a lot of ums and ahs in here because I just uh, wanted to get this so that I could share and be part of this um, like I should have been. Um, and I will continue to keep watching everybody else's. It's it's interesting, and everybody's point of view is um, just one more way to learn and get more out of out of the book and how he was and what he did than just my own own uh, perspective of him and it. So thanks, Mary. I hope you guys, uh, in, you know, enjoy this. <laughs> um, and that's it. So I'm going to stop sharing. Let my computer catch up. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.